Over the last few weeks, I've been playing with this Inspire 2 from Revo Point, and it's a little handheld scanner which has turned out to be a great little tool in my workflow. I had great success with the very first time I used it when I scanned my buddy's head and turned him into a Wolverine. So I had a bit of a think to myself and thought, how else can I incorporate the Inspire 2 into my scale modeling? There are a bunch of videos online showing people scanning hardware like engine transmissions and like here cases. I seriously don't think I'll be scanning anything that size for my scale modeling. I figured the first thing I have to do is scan something smaller. In my studio I have this bus of Batman, it's about 150 mil in height which is about 6 inches. For the scanning software I'm using Revo Metro from Revo Point. And with the scanning uh, settings, I'm using full field, high accuracy, and I'm changing the object type to general. I then change the depth exposure to auto. With the hand scanner, I'm using the optional uh, mobile kit, and that handle doubles as a battery pack as well. One of the things I seem to struggle with is keeping that even distance from the object. It needs to be around 300 mil and that green bar on the right in the excellent section to get the best results. Now there were a couple times where I lost the tracking but the software worked it out and put it back in line again. This scan only took a couple minutes to complete. During the process you can pause the scan and have a look at areas that you may have missed. Now in this case I did miss the top of the ears but I didn't even notice it when I was doing this scan. So I thought I was happy with it and I hit complete which is the button there on the top right hand corner. The software then did a bit of thinky thinky and then produced the raw file. And yes, I know it looks a bit weird at the moment, but we can fix this up. Revo Metro does have what's called a one click edit. And what that does, it processes the model with some predetermined settings with the fusion and the mesh. So there we just hit apply. Then again, it goes off thinky thinky. And this takes about two to three minutes to process. It then saves the edit and we end up with the result. And you can see it's a very soft looking render. Very smooth, there's literally not much detail in there at all. But like I said, we can adjust those settings, which is what I'm gonna do right now. But I just wanna show you something. If we head over to the left hand side, you can see we have just under 158,000 polygons. Now that's very low, we need to increase that and the way we do that is we head over to those very settings I just talked about. First thing I'll do is adjust the fusion. What this does, it alters the point distance that'll give you either smoother detail and less noise or more detail and more noise. I want more detail, so I slide the slider to the left at 0.10. Now our next adjustment is our mesh. So we click on our mesh button. What this does is it adjusts the mesh's density and the level of detail in the model. And of course, this will increase the render processing time of that model. And this time I slide it all the way to the right and the maximum is 8.0. To apply both of those changes at the same time, I can then head over to the one click edit again, have a quick look at our current settings and then hit the old apply button and it's off to do its thinky thinky once again. Our original render, which took about four minutes, is now almost double and it will take about seven minutes to render. But the results are huge. And you can see the difference straight away. Well, in seven minutes anyway. Let's go and check out our polygon count. Our original count was at about 158,000. We are now up to over 12 million. But <laughs> you can see the huge difference that it's made. Now there were a couple of areas I missed during the scan, which was the top of those ears. And of course I couldn't get to the back of the model. And that is an extremely easy fix. We click on fill holes. Then on the right hand side, we've got our little selection box there. I then click on curved and hit the detect button. This will then show me where all the missing parts are in the model. And that's highlighted by the green area. Now to fill those spots, I then need to just go in and click the areas I need to fill. Mm -hmm. 
once I've selected all the holes, I can then hit apply. And it surprisingly does a really good job of sealing up those um, empty voids. And you can see the back of it is really good. That's come up not bad at all. Bit of a ripper, as we say here in Australia. And the top of ears, it's done a better job than I thought it would. Now, with our test run all completed, what I really want to do is create some terrain, some miniature bases. For this, I've literally gone outside and scooped up a whole bunch of bark that was part of my mulch in my garden bed. This I'll be scanning. I've also got some leftover grout. I've had it in this container for a couple of years now and I knew one day it'll come in handy. And this is the day. I also created this turntable disc just to give me a bit more of a volume area to do my scanning on. And it's only 3mm MDF. And this is the turntable that comes with the Reva Point scanner. When I originally cut out that top MDF plate, I made sure I also created that rim. So that turntable is perfectly centered and we don't get any wobbling action happening. Here I'm laying out the bark from the center and heading out to the edges and spreading it fairly evenly across the plate. Using a makeup brush, I kind of clean up the smaller pieces so it's a little bit neater. The good news in this particular scan is I don't have to hold the scanner. The Inspire 2 comes with a fold out little tripod. And because of the stand, the distance from the model and the scanner will be consistent throughout. Again, we hit on auto for the depth exposure. And then heading over to the settings, I make sure it's full field, high accuracy, and the bark is dark, so I've changed the object type to dark. I could then hit start and off she goes. This scan could have been any easier, honestly. This scan only took about a minute and a half to complete. And just like the Batman bus, I then hit complete and off it went to do its calculations and spat it out a minute or so later and we ended up with this. Now you can see it's again looking very undetailed. You know, it almost looks like a UFO to me. Interesting result. It looks like I've got a good capture there. So what I need to do now is head over to the one click edit once again. And we've got our settings there, which is at uh, our previous settings that we tried with the Batman figure. Hit apply and off she goes to start rendering everything. And we end up with a much better detailed uh, terrain. It does look a gazillion times better, but there are a couple of things we need to fix. That overscan area at the bottom and also the turntable disc. And we get rid of them by using the selection tool and we just highlight the areas we want to delete. And then this section, I kind of just need to level it out. So it's uh, as horizontal as I possibly can get it. And again, select it, hit delete, and we end up with the almost final model. When I mean almost, it means I need to fill a whole bunch of holes that are still in the model. As you know, and you saw early in the Batman bust, we do have a tool for that. And it's a matter of going over, clicking on fill holes. And again, we need to select the curved and then we can hit the detect button and it does a great job of finding all those little holes there. But this time to select them, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it upside down because it gives us a much better view of where all the holes are. Then it's a matter of going through all the green areas and clicking them till they turn red. And then we know everything's selected. And then if we're happy with that, we haven't missed anything, we can hit apply and it sorts itself out. And that is looking really good, but we haven't quite finished. What we need to do is export the model as a STL file, because I want to use a piece of software to create the rest of this space. And for that, I'm using a piece of software called Blender, available free online. This next section in Blender is extremely easy to do, mainly because I'm using some very basic tools. Now, this model so far is about 140 mil in width, which is just under six inches. First, I go to Add Mesh and down Pass UV Sphere to Cylinder. I then hit the Enlarge tool and we 
increase the size so just slightly larger than the actual um, terrain model I then decrease the height of that cylinder which is now a disc I then adjust the view on the Z axis so I'm looking straight down onto the terrain and here I just move it around until I position it to as close as center as I possibly can now I've got some bits and pieces that are hanging over the edge but look don't worry about that because we're going to sort that out very shortly I was just experimenting with the placing until I was kind of you know kind of satisfied to where it was now with the placing almost done that disc needs to be adjusted because the polygon count on that is very very low hence why it's not very circular at the moment to fix that we need to head over to the modifying tools we pick edge split and then subdivision surface and we can pick up the levels to about three and that smooths it right out and we've got a nice smooth disc now happy with that we then apply both modifiers so far so good I'm happy with the progress so far now we need to clean up those overhanging areas of the model because uh, they're not going to print very well and we do that by clicking on sculpt mode and heading into our sculpt section on the left hand side is a little tool called grab now for this all we need to do is just go in and click the edge of the hanging areas and just push it straight in till it's within the disc area very easy little technique and we can manipulate that whole terrain area uh, in and out up and down and we can fill up the disc much better by using that sculpt tool now remember this model is 140 mil in width which means when we go to print it we're going to print half the size of what it actually is which means our detail will increase in sharpness with that all completed we select both parts of that model hit file export and export as an STL ready to print out and this is the result how good does that look it really looks like rubble this size is perfect for 124 scale and this one will be perfect for around 135th using a scanner to create your own unique bases would be perfect for tabletop gamers you can create your base and then print them out in the dozens to suit your huge orc army you can even scan various types of material like this tile grout and then in blender combine all the different types of scans to create your own unique different terrain for each job that you do there are so many unlimited variations that you can scan to create your bases you can use things like pebbles wood foam cork just off the top of my head I'm now thinking of creating some unique original bases to sell on my online shop this whole process has been really enjoyable and far easier than I thought it would be it's given me so many options to go out and create extra details for my dioramas if you're new to the channel please go out and check out some of my other videos that are available online in the meantime thanks for sticking around I'll catch you next time Thank <laughs> you.